of most African countries relied on the sale of natural resources, be it oil, timber, diamonds, cocoa, whatever you can think of, we had it. And slowly but surely, the prices were eventually determined by the more developed economies. And at the same time, they were reforming their own tax systems while we thought we could live off the sale of our natural resources. To put it in clear terms, the shell space is the new gold in terms of revenue generation and tax administration. We are lying to this fact. And the only way that we can take advantage of this is to think and have required thinking and doing research to be able to plan our next steps. Over the next two days, Several papers were presented around the theme of the conference and around research is carried out by the stakeholders. Before now, there have been the issue of fundamental human rights, one time ago, like 12 something, where human you know, rights were created. And along the line, in 1987, there was a conference where, where this issue of taxpayers' rights you know, was conceived. And since then, some countries have actually gone ahead to enact what we call taxpayers' bill of rights or charters. You can from there get, you know, idea of what taxpayers' rights are. There are many. There's right to privacy. There's right to uh, right to own property. There's right to fair hearing. There's right to a certain amount of tax liability. So many of them, and it's the players, really. In, uh, in, in, in this particular information technology, that taking advantage of this economy is that sure it's happening in multinational enterprises that take advantage of the various tax regimes in various countries to their advantage. Sometimes, you know, for most times, it's advantage of tax authorities and the, and the government at large. And that's why uh, we hear much about uh, capital inflows into developing countries, and yet we have little or nothing to show because this money is actually also taken away. People support the government they benefit from. And they will pay tax to any government they benefit from. Of course, they use the political participation process of INEC. And from what we listen to, when people choose their own government, the possibility is that the tax morale increases. But that's not enough. It's even much more when there's a responsibility because um, it's not enough that I've chosen you. I want to see, they call it the dividends of democracy. There was also a debate on the theme of the conference organized by the Tax Club University of Lagos for students of tertiary institutions in Nigeria. And the globalization of the cryptocurrency. Now, Nigeria, USA, Japan, Germany have all implemented this. In Nigeria, it's unregulated to fall under Section 1B of the Capital Gains Tax, which provides that all properties and all assets can be subjected to tax, including currencies other than the Nigerian currency. And there are situations where cryptocurrency have been used for, to, as, as consideration for valuable goods. This does not make it exempt from taxation, because Section 5 of 2 on the value added tax have stated that we considerations are given other than money that they should be subject to tax. Now, $400 billion are left on tax and checks in the Nigeria as a result of Philip of the right cryptocurrency. We also propose that tax identification number should operate like the social security number, such that your employer has your tax identification number and is able to, be, and is able to remit tax before you even receive your salary. So without the tax identification number, it would be very difficult for you to even have a job in our modern day Nigeria. <laughs> This episode devoted to the debate will come to you very soon on tax matters.
it affects both the developed and developed countries. Um, if we look at what is happening right now, the OECD states a minimum of $250 billion is lost. The um, Becky panel says Africa loses over $50 billion. Now, what that means is that there's some businesses that are not paying taxes anywhere. They're not paying it in the country where they operate. They're not paying it in the country where they keep these excess funds either. Speaking further on the leakages resulting from the non-taxation of e-commerce. Let me first of all talk about it in Nigeria. I'm not sure whether you've been a customer, whether you've ordered anything online. You'll notice that you don't pay any VAT. It's delivered to your home. It has two negative effects. Number one, the shop owner who pays rent, who has his set up, who has his staff, who got a disadvantage. And if he has not taken, everybody will start to order online and it will be delivered at your house without any tax payment. So that looks at it on a domestic level. On the international level, we have what we call um, significant uh, presence. And basically what happens now with digital, I'll use an example of software. You get a software from any country outside Nigeria. And when it comes time to update or even to repair, it can be done remotely from the country of origin. And you make that payment without any taxes. And I'm sure some of you that have got smartphones, every now and then you update your smartphone without making any payments. And that update comes from borders outside Nigeria. And that is basically what the digital economy is all about. What is the idea behind this whole, um, the whole research network thing? Okay, I think the idea, first of all, is to recognize that research is extremely important in driving whatever you want to do, be it at the private sector or government level. Now, from a government perspective, taxation is critical to development. And so in, in driving tax research, you are putting in place a, the machinery and the tools that would be bring foresight. You know, you're looking at data today and how to influence revenue tomorrow. You're using it to guide state governors. You're using it to guide the, the regulators. You're using it to guide the Federal Revenue Service. You're using it to drive the executive uh, council. You're using it to guide the legislators, judiciary, telling them actions of giving feedback of policies that we put in place, providing ideas of policies that should be in place, providing ideas of how administration should be done, and providing ideas of evaluating what has been done and whether what has been done is working. So it's really a critical tool uh, for government and believe me for basically any organization that to look at the research that has been done and we're really proud of all those are uh, researching. We, we inaugurated this you know two years ago and this is the first time we're bringing even other participants from outside the country to share experiences, share knowledge and hopefully drive, continue to drive change in Nigeria and the continent. People, I'm looking at the team which is revenue challenges online and offline and that has to do with the digital economy. What you see is the challenge with this digital economy and what are the experiences from our neighbor, from numbering countries we can bring in to see that the digital economy is effectively taxed? Well, first of all, digital economy is new. Uh, okay, so whatever is new, a lot of people don't know what to do. They don't know how to go about it. They see that there's change, they see that revenue is growing, but they don't know how to tap that revenue. And in most cases for digital economy, you don't see it. You feel it. If you go on Instagram, you can't really tell this is a corporate organization. So the traditional way of taxing businesses, of taxing revenues, is changing with the digital economy. So what we're doing today is the first of several kinds to look at this area, to encourage more research in this area, to, to suggest ways in which we can look at this area going forward. And so for us, really, it's a start. It's not the end. It's a start of what we need to do. So what are your expectations? My expectations are added knowledge. I'm, I'm particularly going to sit in myself as much as I can to listen in. A lot of people have done research. Um, so we're looking for groundbreaking research. We're looking for new ideas. We're looking for people to challenge what has been done and uh, to tell us new areas of research that is required. But we're also looking at areas that we can easily execute. And you'll notice that from uh, my introduction, 
it's not just about research, it's about bringing the research to use. And we hope that if we do find this groundbreaking research and where there's evidence and we're not doing it, we hope to engage also other members of government on these areas to look at to drive your revenues even more. But again, it's not just revenue generation, and we keep on emphasizing that. It's how these revenues also translate to development, because if it doesn't, and research will also show that, it ultimately affects your ability to generate revenue in the first instance. Taxation of the digital economy is a must do for all tax jurisdictions across the globe. There is a challenge of taxing giant digital companies like Google, Amazon, and Facebook. At home in Nigeria, there is the additional challenge posed by local digital companies like Honda, not forgetting the hill ride transport companies like Uber, OPE, and the numerous others springing up across the land. Nigeria is already beginning to address this challenge by participating in the inclusive framework process led by the OECD. Of course, another major gain of the digital economy in tax administration is its potential to improve the effectiveness of tax administration, as well as facilitate tax compliance by enabling, among other things, online registration for tax, filing and payment of taxes. It is hoped that the work of the Nigerian Tax Research Network will take Nigeria closer to the promised land. We thank you for watching as we all prepare for the Yuletide. Remember, if you must drink before you drive, drink water. And be sure to check that your vehicle is in tip-top condition long before you embark on that journey. See you around. Merry Christmas in advance and a year 2020 that is perfect in all respects. Have a beautiful week ahead.